This is Concepti Classes and today in this video we'll see part 2 of chapter 5, the fundamental unit of life. So in this part we'll see the rest of the topics, we'll see about cytoplasm, we'll study about some of the cell organelles like endoplasmic reticulum, mitochondria, lysosomes etc. And we'll briefly see about cell division as well. Before we enter into part 2, let's take a quick summary of what all we have studied in part 1. In part 1, first we saw about the interaction of cells. Cells are the basic structure and functional unit of life and all organisms are made up of cells. Cells were first discovered by Robert Hooke in 1665. Later, with the invention of many other microscopes, magnifying lenses, it led to the discovery of the microscopic world. Then we studied about unicellular and multicellular organisms. We also saw that in a cell there is a division of labor and each cell has certain kind of cell organelles to perform different types of functions. Then we saw the structural organization of cell. If we observe a cell under a microscope, we come across three features in almost every cell. They are the plasma membrane, nucleus and cytoplasm. So in part one we saw about the plasma membrane. And we saw that in certain plant cells, other than the plasma membrane, there is a rigid outer covering called as the cell wall. And we also saw about the nucleus. Now let's see the rest of the topics in this video. So first in this video, let's see about cytoplasm. Now if we observe a cell, a large region of each cell is enclosed by a cell membrane. Right? We have already studied about this. And this region takes up a very little stain and it is called as cytoplasm. That is this jelly-like colorless semi-fluid substance that is seen in between the plasma membrane and the nuclear membrane is termed as cytoplasm. That is cytoplasm is the fluid content inside the plasma membrane. Now the cytoplasm, it also contains many specialized cell organelles like Golgi apparatus, endoplasmic reticulum, ribosomes, mitochondria, etc. Now each of these organelles, they perform a specific function for the cell. We'll study about some of the organelles in this chapter. And these cell organelles are enclosed by membranes as well. Now we have already studied about prokaryotes and eukaryotes, right? In prokaryotes, we know that there is no nuclear region. Similarly, in prokaryotes, these membrane-bound cells are cell organelles are also absent. Whereas in eukaryotes, they have a nuclear membrane as well as membrane enclosed organelles. Now, the significance of membrane can be understood with the example of viruses. These viruses, they lack membranes and hence they do not show any characteristics of life until they enter a living body and they use that as a host to multiply. Now let's see more about cell organelles. Now we know that every cell has a membrane around it to keep its own contents separate from its external environment. And all cells need a lot of chemical activities to support their complicated structure and function. We have already studied in part one, right? In every cell there is a division of labor. So to keep these activities of different kinds separate from each other, these cells use membrane-bound little structures called as organelles within themselves. For example, mitochondria, endoplasmic reticulum, lysosomes. Okay, and this is one of the main feature, what this membrane-bound organelles that helps us to distinguish between eukaryotic cells and prokaryotic cells. And some of these organelles are visible only with an electron microscope. So some of the important examples of cell organelles which we will discuss now are endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi apparatus, lysosomes, mitochondria, plastids and vacuoles. So let's see each of these topics briefly. So the first organelle that we are going to study is endoplasmic reticulum. Now the endoplasmic reticulum is a large network of membrane bound tubes and sheets. It looks like long tubules or round or oblong bags, also called as vesicles, and they extend from the nuclear membrane to the plasma membrane. And this endoplasmic reticulum is similar in structure to the 
plasma membrane. Now there are two types of endoplasmic reticulum, rough endoplasmic reticulum and smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Although this endoplasmic reticulum varies greatly in appearance in different cells, it always form a network system. So we studied that there are two types of endoplasmic reticulum, rough endoplasmic reticulum and smooth endoplasmic reticulum. So first let's see about rough endoplasmic reticulum. The rough endoplasmic reticulum, they have particles called as ribosomes attached to the surface. Hence, it looks a bit rough under the microscope. And these ribosomes are actually in active cells are the sites of protein manufacture. These are the areas where proteins are manufactured. And this manufactured proteins are then sent to various places in the cell depending on the need using this endoplasmic reticulum. So this RER or the rough endoplasmic reticulum mainly helps in the synthesis and the transportation of proteins. Now smooth endoplasmic reticulum, it helps in the manufacture of fat molecules or lipids which are very important for cell function. Some of these proteins and lipids, they help in the building of the cell membrane and this process is called as membrane biogenesis. Okay, what is the name of this process? Membrane biogenesis. And some other proteins and lipids, they also function as enzymes and hormones. So, the smooth endoplasmic reticulum helps in the synthesis and transportation of fat molecules and lipids. Now, let's see what all are the functions of endoplasmic reticulum. One function of the endoplasmic reticulum is to serve as channels for transport of materials, especially proteins between various regions of the cytoplasm or between the cytoplasm and the nucleus. So it serves as a transport channel uh, between the nuclear membrane and the plasma membrane or vice versa. The endoplasmic reticulum, it also functions as a cytoplasmic framework providing a surface for some of the biochemical activities of the cell. In liver cells of a group of animals called as vertebrates, this smooth endoplasmic reticulum plays a very important role in detoxifying many poisons and drugs as well. So these are some of the functions of endoplasmic reticulum. Now the next organelle is Golgi apparatus. Now Golgi apparatus was first described by Camillo Golgi. This Golgi apparatus consists of a system of membrane bound vesicles or flattened sacs arranged almost parallel to each other in stacks called as cisterns. Now these membranes, they often have connections with the membranes of the endoplasmic reticulum. Therefore, this Golgi apparatus also constitute another portion of this complex cellular membrane system. Now let's see what all are the functions of Golgi apparatus. Now the material synthesized near the endoplasmic reticulum are packaged and dispatched to various targets inside and outside the cell through Golgi apparatus. Now what all are the materials which are synthesized in the endoplasmic reticulum? The proteins, the fat molecules or the lipids. So all the substances which are synthesized near the endoplasmic reticulum is packaged and sent to various targets inside and outside the cell through this Golgi apparatus. So the main functions of Golgi apparatus includes storage, modification and packaging of products in the vesicles. And in some cases, complex sugars may be made from simple sugars in Golgi apparatus as well. Golgi apparatus is also involved in the formation of lysosomes. So let's study about the next organelle which is lysosomes. Now structurally, lysosomes are membrane bound sacs filled with digestive enzymes. So these are small spherical sac like structures filled with digestive enzymes and these digestive enzymes are made by the rough endoplasmic reticulum. The lysosomes are a kind of waste disposal system of the cell. These lysosomes they help the cell to be clean by digesting any foreign material as well as any worn out cell organs. So this lysosomes they provide uh, protection against the bacteria and virus and they make the cells clean as well. What happens in lysosomes is that the foreign materials entering the cell such as a bacteria or a food or all organelles, they end up in the lysosomes. 
which break this complex substances into simpler substances now the lysosomes are able to do this only because they contain this powerful digestive enzymes similarly during the disturbance in cellular metabolism say for example when the cell gets damaged what will the lysosomes do they may burst and the enzymes they digest their own cell therefore the lysosomes are also called as suicide bags of the cell so which is the suicide bags of the cell lysosomes now let's see about mitochondria now this mitochondria are also known as the power house of the cell these small rod shaped organelles are called as mitochondria they have two membrane coverings the outer membrane is porous while the inner membrane is deeply folded now these folds actually increase the surface area for atp generating chemical reaction now what is this atp atp is adenosine triphosphate so these atp molecules is known as the energy currency of the cell and we know that in the cell there are large number of chemical activities and the energy required for this various chemical activities is released by this mitochondria in the form of atp molecules so that is why we call this mitochondria as the power house of the cell so the body uses the energy stored in atp for making new chemical compounds and for mechanical work the mitochondria it also have its own dna and ribosomes therefore mitochondria are able to make some of their own proteins now let's see about plastids now plastids are only seen in a plant cell see this chloroplast this is a type of plastid so they are absent in animal cells there are two types of plastids chromoplast which are colored and leucoplast which are white or colorless now this chromoplast which contain the pigment chlorophyll are known as chloroplast so this chloroplast are green colored plastids which contain chlorophyll and the chloroplast are important for the photosynthesis in plants and the chloroplast it also contain various yellow and orange pigments in addition to the chlorophyll and leucoplast they are white and colorless now the internal organization of chloroplast consists of numerous membrane layers which are embedded in a material called as stroma see this is a stroma these are very similar to mitochondria in external structure whereas leucoplast they are colorless and they are primarily organelles in which materials such as starch oil and protein granules are stored therefore chloroplast they contain chlorophyll which is a green pigment they absorb sunlight and helps in photosynthesis they produce and store glucose whereas chromoplast they contain colored pigments like carotenoids red orange and yellow pigments they are found in flowers and fruit leucoplast they contain no pigment pigment they are colorless and they are used to store starch oils protein granules now plastids they also have their own dna and ribosomes just as mitochondria now vacuoles are storage sacs for solid or liquid contents see this is a vacuole in plant cell and this is a vacuole in animal cell now the vacuoles are small cells in animal cells while plant cells have very large and permanent vacuoles now the central vacuole of some plant cells may even occupy about 50 to 90 percentage of the cell volume now as we said in animal cells these vacuoles are very small in size and they are temporary whereas in plant cells these vacuoles they occupy uh, about 50 to 90 percentage of the cell volume and they are permanent in nature and they are full of cell sap and they provide turgidity and rigidity to the cell many important substances in the life of a plant cell like the amino acids the sugar the various organic acids and proteins they are all stored inside these vacuoles now in single cell organisms like amoeba the food vacuole they contains the food items that the amoeba has consumed and in some unicellular organisms specialized vacuoles they also play a very important role in expelling excess water and some waste from the cell as well so let's see a simple comparison between plant cell and animal cell plant cells are quite large when compared to animal cell in size the cell wall is present inside the plant cell outside the plasma membrane whereas the cell wall is absent in animal cells plastids like chloroplast are present in plant cells whereas 
plastids are absent in animal cells centrosome are absent in plant cells whereas centrosome are present in animal cells and in plant cells the vacuoles are quite large whereas the vacuoles in animal cells are small or sometimes it will be absent as well so each cell thus acquire its structure the ability to function because of the organization of its membrane and organelles in specific ways thus we can say that the cell has a basic structural organization this helps the cell to perform functions like respiration obtaining nutrition clearing of the waste material forming new proteins hence we can say that cell is the fundamental structural unit of living organism and it is also the basic functional unit of life now let's briefly see about cell division so cell division in organisms are not only meant to produce a whole new organism it is also to grow and replace the old dead injured cells and to form gametes required for production so this process by which new cells are made is called as cell division now there are two types of cell division mitosis and meiosis this mitosis the process of cell division by which most of the cells divide for growth is called as mitosis so in this process each cell called as a mother cell divides to form two identical daughter cells and these daughter cells they have the same number of chromosomes as the mother cells and they have identical nuclei as well so this helps in the growth and repair of tissues in organisms now meiosis is a type of cell division that occurs in cells that give rise to gametes like the sex cells eggs or sperm so specific cells of reproductive organs or tissues in animals or plants they divide to form gametes which after fertilization give rise to the offspring so they divide by different process called as meiosis which involves two consecutive divisions so when a cell divides by meiosis it produces four new cells instead of just two see 1 2 3 4 so this new cells they only have half the number of chromosomes than that of the mother cells if you want to know more about mitosis and meiosis message me in the comment section i'll give you a separate lecture on these topics so that's all for chapter 5 the fundamental unit of life tune in soon for the next session till then take care stay safe may god bless you all thank you and bye bye